Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next session of From Nothing, Tam's Story. We're going to pick up a little bit ahead of where we last left off, but first, you have a message you want to send. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly what how late Sagona kind of stayed the night before. Um, but after it is clear that she is all settled, I feel like Tam would kind of like settle her back into her room. He is going to come back into his room and kind of do his sort of nightly like de-stress routine practice prayers etc and after he is in bed he is going to cast sending to his father um, okay and the message he sends is hey dad i have a cleric question why would a god save somebody's life mark them and then never talk to them. Any ideas? Thanks. Um, there is a moment's pause. Let me see if I can piece together a response for you here. Sorry, I know I'm hitting you with this out of nowhere. Uh, a hint of warning would have been nice. Uh, Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. 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 After a moment's pause, you hear Tumerity. It's nice to hear from you. The divines can be unknowable, but that would likely be the work of Deva or an avatar. Tam is tempted to spend another to send another message, but he will refrain uh, and make a note in his little journal to look up Deva and Avatar. Okay. And it says to look up for Sagona. Very important. All right. <laughs> okay. Then he goes back. Then he goes to sleep. Okay, so go ahead, you can click the long rest, which to do so on the foundry sheet at the top next to your level, you see there is a little triangle that looks like a teepee. You can click that oh, yeah. and hit rest. Oh, it's a teepee, that's what it is, okay. Or tent. I would have thought, I would have thought the, the knife and fork would be the long rest, but that must be the short rest. That is then. short rest. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. All right. The next morning, you are awakened fairly early, uh, probably on your own volition, um, but you hear Turk milling about outside the rooms. Um, there is a knock on your door after you hear his metallic footsteps nearby. Sure. He gets up. He answers it. Tam. Yeah. The, the Nadajdis are due any minute, so gather your crew. Will do. Um, I imagine he's probably up and dressed already. Uh, okay. It's like yeah, six in the morning, so... 
Yeah, he gets up pretty early, but he, he, yeah, he can kind of stumble through the rest of the season. Button, button things up, um, and he will go and knock on the doors of everybody. Uh, I don't who is there anyone that is not awake? Uh, Sagona. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> how did I know? Um, he, uh, what does he do to amuse her? Um, probably, you know, he kind of, he kind of wakes her up, um, and uses thaumaturgy to kind of, like, make little storm cloud sounds. Um, and then, uh, after she's kind of, like, broken consciousness, he uses thaumaturgy to, to make it sound like, uh, she's farting. Okay. Sigona, like, will get up and sit up and look at you and be like, get out, Oh, what's going on? We gotta go to this meeting. Oh. Remember, Nadaji's. Right, right. Okay, give me a minute, and she import etc. Mm -hmm. Begins yep. the process of getting dressed. It's yep. just a few minutes before your crew all kind of meander their way down the tavern, and as that happens, uh, let's go ahead and move imagery. The tavern is fairly busy with the early morning crowd. Um, it seems as though a lot of the merchants and a lot of the woodcutters and river fishermen that work out of Augur City are here getting breakfast and such. Uh, Turk is, like, standing by the table that Alicaster and Annabelle are already seated at. And it looks like Alicaster and Annabelle have been awake for a while. Uh, they have tomes open on the table in front of them. They have, like, the remnants of clava and, like, an empty plate from breakfast, long since abandoned. Alakester looks Wait, up at you. Ask. Huh? There's clava. I would like clava. You can you can get some clava. Um, Fantastic. Alakester looks at you and your crew, and he says, Good morning. Morning. You all rest well, I presume. Good, good. Now, what do y'all know about the Nadajdis, if anything? Um, didn't you say that they were related in some way to, to trade? Yeah. And it's interesting that we just got a trade merchant that was murdered yesterday. It's, it's all right. It's so much deeper Two than points. that. Okay. That's, uh, should I roll history? I imagine... I Go ahead and roll a history, history check. Okay. History. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, don't know much. Anything. Uh, You... You basically know what he's told you. Um, okay. You know that... You do know you've heard the name before. Before he told you. But you didn't know anything Sorry. about it. Right. Alright. They are... Perhaps... The strongest allies we have in our efforts here. Okay. Pomona Nadajdi and Ursula Nadajdi are who are coming. Pomona is, at the moment, I believe, considered the head of her household. She's a gemologist, a powerful mage, and handles a lot of the trade agreements between Aurelia itself and neighboring nations, so... Oh, powerful. Yes. The Nadajdi fleet is second in size only to Aurelia's actual navy. They employ many mercenaries, including the Red Ledger, the Merry Guard, and, well, the Seventh Trellis. Wrinkles his nose. They're a big deal. Okay. Ursula Nadajdi's. A leading knight of an order of paladins to the name of Nier. He looks at Sagona. Sagona's like listening. Um, 
She, when you look at her, she just raises her eyebrows. Okay. From what I understand, she has her hands in, well, the military, the castellan of, or I'm sorry, the castle managing for the keep itself, and also the gold's watch. Okay. The gold watch here? Everywhere. Okay. I don't know the full details of that. It's not really my purview. I haven't had many conversations with the woman. She's pretty quiet as it is. But they'll be here any minute. So, I expect you to listen in, pay attention, and let me know if I miss anything. Okay. Do you need help with anything else? Do you want us to be checking uh, for um, mistruths the way we did last time? Uh, maybe just keep an eye out. In case okay. there is some deceptions, but I trust her, at least. As much as I can in business, Parker. And as he's talking, suddenly a a human man with b short black hair and like what looks like a fine suit steps into Cavi's tavern and like looks around and then steps to the side of the door. Uh, and then two women enter the tavern. Uh, one of them wearing fine silks and lace, but it looks like it's extremely well tailored to fit her body. So even though she's completely covered, not much is left of the imagination. Um, Interesting. It is clear this woman uses her physical presence to maybe intimidate or entice. Uh, it is a power move, apparently. Uh, the other one, that's not really uh, an issue, as she's wearing full plate armor. Uh, with rivulets of black crossing all over the plate armor um, as if lightning bolts. And you immediately recognize adamantine plate. Um, emblazoned across the chest is the symbol of Nier. Uh, these two enter, and as that happens, it's almost as if your presence, like these two women don't look at you or your crew at all. Uh, this is what they look like. Unfortunately, it's a little bit older art, but they do the job. Pomona's on the left, Ursula's on the right. Uh, okay. as they enter and are approaching the table, Alacaster stands up, as does Annabelle, and Alacaster says, and I'm going to note, unlike last conversation, this one's going to feel a lot more like a cutscene that you're there for. Sure. Um, Alacaster says, a real pleasure to meeting you in person once more, Miss Nadarty. And of course... You as well, Knight Ursula of the Order. Ursula doesn't say anything, but she nods her head in acknowledgement. Pomona says, It is a priority for us, of course, to stay abreast of the happenings here. It's our duty, after all. I never doubt it. I presume your journey east was safe and peaceful? Some... Trouble at sea. Nothing we couldn't contend with, clearly. A shame for the headache, then. I did recommend you charter with Dora, if you recall. Next time I'm moving this much hardware, I'll abide. Regardless, I am relieved to see all three of you whole and well. And as she says that, Alacaster, like, gestures to sit down, and they do. All of them pull a seat up, and as that happens, uh, roll me an Arcana check. Twenty-two. A magical spell is cast, and one that you recognize the effects of, but when it's not one that you've ever like actually performed. Um, it is similar to the sort of 
protecting spell that muffles sound, except it's so much more powerful. Um, you don't, it's you're like not. That little bubble he made that one time. Kind of, except it is square in shape. It includes you and the table, and everything outside of it is almost like muddled to vision. Uh, it it is also suddenly darker in this little square, as if it's a different atmosphere. Like, are we in a different place right now? No, you're still in the tavern, but there is definitely a barrier of some kind. Wild. Okay. And as that spell goes up, Alacaster gestures and he says, You're too kind. You'll notice, of course, the crew I'd hired to get us here. Young, but zealous. Marigard folk. And at this point, Pomona like glances over at you and your crew, and she says, I thought I'd caught a center fish. I'm pleased they got you and your burdens here quickly. Ursula did mention word of a suspicious group of mercenaries provoking a member of the Watch. And Alacaster like, kind of winces and he says, I sure wouldn't know a thing about that. <laughs> well, uh, Tim's eyes are so big. <laughs> Hermona continues. Surely not. These issues will be handled promptly, I'm certain. We don't need one detective spreading dangerous information. I'll handle things on our end. I knew you would. I have news that might be a boon for you, after all. That is what I was hoping for. Our friend has departed from his little cupboard, though I believe he's taking a scenic route. So our time frame? Plenty. More than enough for you to clean up the little odds and ends with this detective before our friend should arrive anywhere. Cartone seems confident their course might be meandering. Good news after all, yep. Did Cartone say anything to say about uh, our leak? Eniga is a lecherous and greedy fool, but he knows nothing of Demerick's connections. Ursula nods. That's all that, but she doesn't say anything. Pomona then continues to say, We need eyes inside the Golden Keep, and we need them sooner rather than later. That might be done. We'll need help getting somebody inside. That's why you work with the best, after all. Deal with this detective while I apply some discomfort to the right members of the council staff. We're going to need an option to bail, Poe. You'll have one. I can promise friendly faces on the inside, but I cannot offer ears yet. The Castellan Rel is an old friend of ours. He shall be able to help our other friends. I'm sorry. He should be able to help should our other friends become unavailable. I cannot stress enough. However, this obstacle needs to be overcome. I said we'd take care of it. Quietly, too. What do you know about him? The detective... She's very new to the Gold Watch, but cut her teeth in Shore Watch. Ursula mentioned she'd likely die before turning coat, but I'd prefer her simply quieter than anything else. She is the sort who's likely unable to have her loyalty bought with coin. Do we know if she's told anybody about last night? Ursula intercepted her report. She likely is on duty as we speak, dealing with that bit of nastiness at the Northern Gate. Should get some time to think, however. Right. What was, uh, what was on the report? Ursula finally speaks up. An unknown contract upon her. A tale, but suspicious for its appearance. Suspects enigma and foul play. Seems concerned about rebellious types based on the proximity to the transfer of information with an informant. There you have it. That's bad news, Poe. 
Then you grasp my concern with the situation, Lord Graver. Have your pups handle the situation, or things will get much more unpleasant. I would really rather avoid involving Eudora, unless we have to. She has her own hands tied in the Bay of Blades. That's our first step, then. Yeah. We don't need any more stickiness here. What of Demeric? Any notes? No, the bell has assured me he's focused upon news from Quarterstone. He's delegated the domestics to his council, which, for now, is a blessing. It is only a matter of time before he decides to shift his focus. I trust Carton will have a friend in the right place before that happens. Then it sounds like we have a little time to get our ducks in the line. Pomona smiles. And then she suddenly stands, as does Ursula. Alacaster, Aver the gentleman, does the same. And Pomona says, It's been a pleasure, as always. I wish you and your team luck and haste. Ma'am? Lady Pomona Nadajdi and Ursula turn and leave. As they leave, as soon as they step outside the barrier, it suddenly it's like they, they blur out. And Alacaster sits back down, and he looks over at you and your team. I'd like you to roll an insight check. Just an insight check for now. See what comes of it. Ten. Pomona, who did most of the speaking, um, is hard to read. She's slick. A professional. Um, it all seemed very... Not rehearsed, but it seemed like someone who had a very natural way of conveying important information without giving too much. And it was all... It all felt very guarded. Even in the secure, like, space. Well. What's your take? Well. I think I made the wrong call following this Kaiser person, because if that is the person that's our detective, I don't know how we're going to convince her that I don't know how this team is going to convince her of anything because they've seen us already. Kazanel is her name. And yes, she's the detective in question. What's she detecting? I don't know. She's a detective with the Gold's Watch. I likely assume she detects all sorts of things in part of her job. I mostly mean, why is it a threat to this? Tam, the Gold's Watch are loyalists. She works for the loyalists. She's a detective. If she yeah, catches she... wind of what we're doing, that's a problem. she can't be bought, and she's a loyalist. She's fresh out uh, of Shorewatch. I don't know how much of a loyalist she actually is, but I do know she's likely the sort that coin is not why she does the work she does. I don't have much of a read on the woman. I don't know. How do you convince someone like that to be quiet? If there's no other option, she might need to be silenced permanently. Wouldn't they just replace her with a different detective? Well, not one that knows your face, or knows what you said to her. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is what you want us to do next, then. We need her dealt with. We need her dealt with quickly and quietly. Whether you convince her to come our way of thinking, and you're confident she's brought to our side of things, or she needs to be gone. What do I know about Shorewatch? Like, what would... This is a... I, I don't know the map super well. Is this, like, kind of more likely to be a neutral party in this war? No. Roll a history check. Shorewatch is not part of KO at all. Um, that's, that's what I mean by neutral. Yeah, like, roll, roll history. Thirteen. Shorewatch is the training ground for the Gold's Watch and the Aurelian army. It is literally, when you think of like Fort Benning or boot camp, you think of Shorewatch. Um, it is where the, the Aurelian National Army is. It's where recruiting goes on. It's where new soldiers are created. And it's also where new guardsmen are trained. Um, it is a very secure city. It's famously that. Um, it is a, a commonly known word of mouth within Aurelia that Shorewatch is the army city. Okay. And she was picking up some kind of information for Enika. That's what makes me suspect she is on their side, unless she's trying to do something else with it. Or she was feeding information to him? Skolna shakes her head. What do you think, Skolna? She shrugs and she says, He gave that to her. That missive. So he trusts her for some reason. Do we know anything else? Were you able to break that code on that piece of paper? Would that help us at all? Uh, Alicaster kind of tilts his head and he says, we piece together what it said. Is That's how we know that he's, de he's Demerick's focusing on uh, Quarterstone. Oh. looking into this place specifically. Okay. Give me a minute to think and um, I'll we'll go out there and we'll, we'll deal with it. I need you to understand. Our operations, we can't make another move with a detective like this aware of us. I understand. All right. Suddenly, the barrier goes down. The Golden Gate. Sorry. Do we know where she is? He kind of shakes his head and he says, probably investigating that crime scene up by the fool's porch. Which means you might get seen again, so be careful what you look like and who you take. Yeah. I'm trusting you at this time. I understand. No, if this doesn't work out, you need to understand. If this doesn't work out, I might need to send you back to Farum. I am. I. I. I know. All right. I know. I don't, I don't want to jeopardize any of this. I promise. It's too important. Appreciate that. And he, he suddenly looks very tired as he leans back. Um, and he like picks up a mug of mostly empty clava and takes a drink and he says, right, <clears throat> we'll be here. Good luck. Thanks. 
Okay. Tam will kind of motion to his team to kind of like come back up to his room to have a little chat. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. So. That didn't sound like good news. No. I mean, I can disguise myself, but now she she knows that I can do that. Is she really going to be looking at every person on the street for a disguise? Probably, probably not. But I'm saying that it's it's not. It doesn't put us in the best negotiating position. I think it would maybe be better if that were not the case. Sigona like cracks her knuckles and she says, "We need to get her to a spot where we can talk to her and make her see our way of things." Where she, f maybe we can, maybe, convince her of our way of thinking without her getting away and running off with what she knows. Just in case. All right. All right. That seems pretty risky, but it seems like the only play we've got. And in that case, I don't want to be without any of you, but all of us are recognizable. Skulna, you know the city, you know the good hiding places. Do you have a, an idea of where we could try to talk to a person like this? Skulna, like, taps a dagger on her lip as she's thinking for a moment. Uh, and then she says, Get rent a room from a boarding house. There's lots of them. Okay. But we'd have to convince her to get there. Or we could take her there. I guess. You mean. You mean by force. Take her there. Skull no blinks. Maybe a better idea. <sighs> Talking about a guard. One out of uniform. Uniform. Oh, well. She wasn't wearing a uniform. She wasn't wearing a uniform. Can't tell if that's shifty or if it's on purpose. Seems like it's on purpose. Lots of guards don't wear uniform. It's to hide who they are. Shifty then. And on purpose. I just... I don't see how it would be easy to actually convince her if we, if we pluck her up and take her somewhere, you know? Might not be. That's not... That's not really a good position to be having a conversation from. Well, if we're gonna have her someplace quiet where we can talk to her, that also makes it easy to end her, as they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they were saying. We can try and talk it out, or we can try and do it by force. Yeah. Either way, this ain't my country. What do you think, Sagana? Look. The woman sounds like she's honorable. Right? Like, the sort of person f that takes that sort of thing seriously. And that sort of person, if they realize they're being duped, or they're working with the wrong side of things, maybe they can be swayed with words alone. But if they're too blind by duty, 
we'd be wasting our time. Yeah. And we don't know what she is. No. We can... Maybe we know that we found her in a brothel, right? Uh, a temple to Marcella is a little more than a brothel um, with some religious <laughs> side effects. Um, which means that she's not above going someplace crass or vulgar to do her job. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty and she doesn't wear a guard's uniform, so it's likely that she's comfortable being in the dark, in the shadows. But she has places to retreat to. She has friends in dark places, obviously, because we followed her into an alley where we were surrounded. Yeah. That's not the type that's particularly easy to take somewhere by force. Oh, I think the best way to handle this is you go alone and try and talk to her. See how well it goes, and you don't tell her too much. If you can get a conversation going, if you think there's a way to crack the shell, then we can pursue that further. But if not, then I think maybe we have to go the darker way of things. Okay. It's hard because we don't know where she is. We don't, and I don't know how much information is too much if she's a detective, you know? I mean, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta find her. She knows we're at Cavi's, because all the guards know that. All of the guards know that. Maybe that's something. She knows that we're at Cavi's, I know what I know. I can send messages just from my head. I can ask her, well, why was she? I was saying I could send her a message to ask her to have a drink with us, but why would she do that? That might be the wrong course. Do we really want her not loyal to us stepping in here and seeing the Cravers? No, no, we don't want that. I mean, they already know that we're at Cabbie's, but that's true. How about this? Let's go find her first. So there's got to be other taverns in this town. There are. There's There are many. Boarding house is not a bad idea. And neutral ground might make the most sense if I can convince her in that direction. So let's at least go find her first. See what she's working on. Maybe we can find out a little bit more about this murder, too, if she's working on it, because that seems, it seems too coincidental to me that there's nothing going on there. What do we know Let's about that already? I don't know. It, it, an importer is killed, and we're working with a person, an importer is killed that seems relevant to the balance of trade here. And one of our, our biggest allies is a, is a trading partner. So nothing. Nothing. We don't know anything about that. Other than that the guards think that it's us. Because they're dumb. Right. Perhaps we are in a situation of unfortunate circumstance. Yeah, that seems about right, Wash. Perhaps she would be understanding of that. That we're in a situation of unfortunate circumstance? Maybe we appeal to that side? Point out oh, we that. are new in town? Maybe. She, doesn't, she already doesn't really trust us, but that could be something. We... Maybe avoid the threats, go to her. Uh, my old mentor taught me back 
when I was training to make people like you ask them for favors. Yeah. People like you when you when they do you favors. Or at least they think they understand you. It's true. If maybe we could appeal to her sense of good nature to get us off the hook. It will help us and her. They said we have plenty of time. They did say we have time. Okay. Skullnut. How about this? How about you come with me because you're good at hiding? And I'll disguise myself. And we can see if we can at least find her and maybe do a little bit of reconnaissance, see where she is and what she's doing and what she's saying. And then I can pick a moment and talk to her for a little bit. Skolna nods. I am going to drink the fish. And Sigona looks at like a fish. You're going to drink like a fish. Yes. <laughs> we don't have anything else to do. Oh, Might okay. as well. But maybe not too much in case we need you later. Maybe? All right. <laughs> drink the fish. Uh. Um. You. This is your plan, Tam. How do you how do you handle this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will I will admit Emily that it has been it has been a long day and Emily's brain is a little bit cloudy so I'm like I don't know. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but we're going to try it. <laughs> um, Tam will disguise himself. Okay. As, what else? As a, a different different guy from yesterday different features kind of okay. like a little taller red hair human human guy kind of like a little bit nondescript except with like the red hair and he always has like he he he's still tam so he still has the big expressions um maybe a couple fleck of freckles now on his face but like still has the expressions but like the eyes are green instead of red now <laughs> Um, hair is still curly like it is. It's just that he doesn't have horns. That kind of situation. After um, you disguise yourself, Skolna looks at you. And she quickly appraises you as if she's, like, memorizing what you look like now. And then she just <laughs> nods. Okay. Um... He will, they can, they can go, they're going to go back up to like Fool's Porch area. See if they can find her on the case. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the map. You are searching for Kaiza Nell, the detective that you may have accidentally uh, alerted to your, your duties. Um, also important, um, he disguised his clothes so he doesn't look like he's wearing his breastplate or his mirror guard stuff. Um, I think he can I think he can still have a scabbard at his side, right? Yeah. You, your disguised um, self can completely change your appearance in all aspects. Fantastic. So he's hiding his sword also. Okay. Uh, what is your spell DC? Uh, 16, I think. Where do I find this on the street? Uh, okay, so if you click on, like, if you mouse over on the right, you'll see spells. Oh, 17. It's 17. Yeah. Okay. Great. You make your way uh, out of Cavies in to the north, the northwest, from the edge of the Windstar District and the, uh, the Castletown area. And you're heading up into the Fairy Gate area and Fool's Porch. As you're switching yes. districts, I need you to roll me a d6. Sure. Four. 
Please roll me a D100. Encounter. I think it rolled two by accident. That's okay. We'll damage. use the the first two. Twenty-seven. No rolls. Okay. You're, like, making your way down the side streets. Um, Skolna is slipping in and out of vision, and it's actually... You notice Skolna when she steps into a shadow, you can't see where she is. And then suddenly she'll step back out of the shadow and she's visible again. It is... It is... It's like looking at an illusion. It's very bizarre. Unsettling. Um, but she is moving quietly and secretly. Um, so she's slipping the notice of basically everybody. Um, suddenly, as you round a corner on the next street, um, you're in a quiet little side street with just a few people, and you see there is a 15 or 16 year old young, like, human man who is like, he's like pacing back and forth, and as soon as you round the corner, he says, Hey, hey you, got a minute? Not really, but what? Well, if there's some coin in it for you, if you can. Just... just a moment. Tam keeps clear sight of, like, all of his belongings and stuff. Look. Up the street, right there. You see, in front of that cafeteria, you see that... And he, like, is pointing. And he says, you see that blonde-haired girl? Uh, mm -hmm. And there is a blonde-haired elven woman who is... Looks... For an elf, very young. Um, about the same age as this kid, probably. Um, she is sweeping in front of this cafeteria. He says, okay. Look, here's all I need you to do, okay? I'll give you I'll give you five silver if you just let me look like, like if you go up to her and you start trying to flirt your way with her, let me come up and tell you off and then you leave. <laughs> Why don't you just tell her you like her? I tried. It's not... Look, I'm not good at... That's talking. I can't... All right, look. Just... If you do it my yes, way... Yes, Yes, look, listen. Look, look at me. Look at me. I'm looking. What do you like about her? She's sweet and kind and generous to everyone. And... She's just... She's really pretty and... I've... <sighs> Tell her that. But it's... I can't say it to her. Why not? Because she'd be looking at me, and... Uh, what, presumably, what you want is to look to look at her more, and for her to notice you, right? Right, but if she doesn't like me back, then I'll just... I'll look like a fool. And look, if you do it this way... If we do it this way, if we do it my way, when I can scare you off, she'll see me as courageous and, you know, brave and willing to stand up for her. Are you courageous and brave and willing to stand up for you? I'm willing to stand up for her. Okay. Prove to me how brave you are and go talk to her. I'm not brave. That's why I'm buying you to do this. You understand? Okay, but then you'll be, you'll be showing her a lie that you're not brave. Instead, you could prove to yourself and her that you actually are courageous. I believe in you. You can do it. He, like, is looking at you. Uh, and he's like, it looks like he's real reluctant. Roll me a persuasion check. Okay. Unless you're, or deception check, whichever you are mean. It's 100% a persuasion check. And, like, he will literally even bardic inspiration him if he can persuade him to do this. Okay. Twenty-one. This this kid looks at you, and he takes a deep breath, and he says, "Okay. Okay. Fine. What's the worst that'll happen?" You're brave. What's the worst that'll happen? He like clenches. Hey, what's, your what's, what's your name? Uh. Carl. Nice to meet you, Carl. You got this. You're going to pat his shoulder and give him bardic inspiration. Okay. Right. You got this. You can do it. Are you sure? 
I'm absolutely sure. And honestly, if you really want to like have a relationship with her, this is the best way to do it. Be honest, tell her that you think that she's kind and pretty and all those things. All right. People like it when you notice. All right, all right. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. And he, like, his shoulders are up by, like, his ears, and he his fists are quenched. But he walks out of the side street towards the cafeteria. Do you wait and see what happens? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. You gave him a bardic, you said. Is that yep. a D6 or a D8? A D8. Okay. All right. You watch. You can't really hear what he says because he leans in like at first it's clear that he's like he's leaning in too close. Uh, he's nervous and anxious and the the elven woman looks at him and is like leaning back. She's like leaning on the broom like almost as if to like defend herself with it. But you watch as her body language changes and her hands drop on the broom down lower um, and he's talking and you can see by his body language, he's not really making eye contact. Um, sure. But he rolled a 23 with your assistance. Um, so a moment later, you watch as she nods and then she like gestures to the, f the ground where she's sweeping. And then she like tilts her head towards the cafeteria and she's saying something. Uh, he, you, you see like his whole body language, his posture straightens. Um, he's looking square at her now. And then he turns and looks back toward the side street where you were. And he just smiles. I give him, I give him a little up, no, up nod and I don't have message or anything, but. You I don't, just, you don't I blow a sending know. on this? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but I mouth, but I mouth, you're so brave. He just shakes his head, but he's still smiling. And then he walks into the cafeteria and she follows him. Good guy. Good job. Something succeeded, apparently. Hooray! A bardic well spent. <laughs> All right. I, you continue <laughs> through the Ferrygate district. All right. As you're approaching the Fool's Porch, I need you to roll me an investigation check. Oof, okay. I'm not great at this. That's okay, Skull is rolling one as well. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, 18 for Tim. 18, that's not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good for my plus two. Okay, I need you to roll another d6. Okay. What? One. Okay, so you make your way out in front of the Fool's Porch Gate. Uh, you do see some guards milling about. You don't see Gold's Watch. You just see City Guard. Um, you see that the wagon that was covered in blood, the wagon is still there. Uh, the blood looks like it's been cleaned off. The wagon itself, it's clear that it has not been moved from where it was. Uh, you do not see... Kaiza or any other Gold's Watch around. Um, with an 18, I need you to roll me a D100. Okay. Luck be with me. 54. 54. Middle of the road. Okay. I need to know how you're approaching this, the, the wagon and the gate. Like, are you walking straight up to it? Are you like rounding about it from the alleys or are you waiting like how are you approaching this i think i think this is a wait situation for tam because i think last time they were literally just lingering near it and the guards were like meh um and I, at this time they don't look like mayor garden that's helpful um but i think i think he just wants to kind of like look like he's sort of wandering by like maybe like kind of look a little bit like a tourist um and like he Kind of looking like he like belongs here, but also like in a normal in a normal way. Right. Uh, okay. 
as you're approaching the gates, uh, one of the guards by the gate, like, perks up and he says, You there? Hmm? What you doing around here? I don't know, I'm just looking around. Alright, well, please be careful. This section's cold and off. It's, uh, there's been an accident around here, so please, watch your step. Oh, is everybody okay? It's not really your concern. Just please keep moving. Stay away from that side of the street if you don't mind. Okay. Do, do you... He'll kind of like weave over to the other side of the street. Okay. Roll me a perception check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Eight. All right. Over the next, like, five minutes, you are just kind of meandering around here, looking around, looking like a tourist. But with an eight, you don't actually see anything helpful. Suddenly, you hear from the nearby alley, you hear a sound that you could have sworn sounded like somebody went, Tam, but wasn't quite right. Uh, okay. Mm, okay. I'm going to assume that that's Skulma. Uh, Tam will look around for, to go in that direction and look around. Okay. As you do, coming from the wall of the street, you hear done something. Fucking Skulma. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tam. Uh, meanwhile, Tam, having completely lost Skulma, not even sure where she is. <laughs> finds, you know, finds her. What does she, what does she have? What does she find? She doesn't touch it, but she points to it. And you see this side street is full of old barrels that look like they were first storage at one point, but they've taken so much weather damage that they, they barely serve as a surface. And now they're, the wood is falling apart. They, they've clearly been neglected here out in the weather for months. Um, but you see next to them, a glint of sunlight shines off of a, what looks like a wire. And Skulna points at it. She's like crouched down next to it. And she looks up at you. Is that a, a wire in a barrel? It's a garret. Oh, like a, like a murder weapon? She nods. Er it might have been one. She points to one ends of the wire is like shorn, and you can see that the wire is splitting apart. Uh, the under end of the wire has a wooden uh, dowel that the wire is wrapped around firmly. You think this is the thing the police are looking for? It's cool shrugs. Might be leverage. Might be. Okay, let's pick that. Um, actually, what do you think? Leave it here or bring it with us? Let's leave it here. Let's not carry a murder yeah. weapon. Yeah, I feel like if we had the murder weapon, that would maybe make us suspicious. Okay, you know, where you, um, Tam is going to kind of look and try to like memorize where this alley is. Uh, I, Emily, am very bad at directions, so... You can just say Tam makes a note of it yeah yeah tam is going to take note of it so we can give it give directions to if we if we find uh kaiza okay uh i imagine we do not see her though no in the uh not yet you your perception rolls have not been it awesome was not it was not great no um okay Um, is the same, the same dude is on duty that told me to kind of, like, fuck off and mind my business? This was, like, ten minutes, so, ten like, minutes. Okay, so same he has not minutes. left, no. He's just gotcha. standing by the gate, looking bored, because he's a guard. Gotcha. Um. I'm going to, listen, this worked last time, we're going to do it again. I'm going to look around for critters. 
I want okay. what are the creatures what are the creatures that are around that could maybe be my eyes in this place to maybe find this person. Okay. Roll me a D one hundred. Forty seven. So the obvious one is on the left hand side of the gatehouse there is a guard with a dog. But that dog yes. is clearly employed. And is likely not an option. Yeah. Um, farther up the street, uh, along one of the half walls in front of a business, you do see a cat is sleeping. Great. A cat is never going to listen to me again. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot think of a creature less predisposed to Tam. Um... But sure, we can try it. <laughs> okay. It is a, what looks like it's a fair, it's a short-haired, like, orange striped cat. Uh, it seems like a pretty big one. His tail is dangling off of the half wall. Uh, he seems comfortably asleep. Is there any sort of, uh, is there any sort of, like, meat cart around? Is there any sort of, like, you look for a vendor? cart around? Yeah, a vendor, yeah. Um, i trying to find something more rations yeah there's a uh what looks like a like a, a fried sandwich cart uh maybe like just a block away you see it from where you're standing um they they okay. seem to make sandwiches of like hoagie rolls with fried things on them fantastic uh i will get a sandwich which is with as much fried meats as they will give me uh, it seems mostly seafood, so fried shrimp, sure. fried fish. Fried shrimp, fish, great. fish are great. Fish are great. Fish are great for cats. Fantastic. Okay. It costs you four copper for a street sandwich. Great. He will amble back. All right. To the, he will amble back to the cat. And it's asleep, so we're going to take the ten minutes to cast speak with animals and save my spell slot. <laughs> Let me roll to see um, if the cat wakes up and moves. No. Yeah, okay. I figured it might not. Uh, okay. He casts Speak with Animals as a ritual. And he takes some of this fish out of the sandwich. Okay. It's hot. Says, sure. I'm resistant to fire, so I don't think he cares. Sure, you don't hurt uh, yourself. <laughs> um, and he says... Hey. You say you, you're talking to this cat. Um, I'm talking to this cat. Hi. Um. Hello. This orange cat kind of you watch as its limbs stretch. Your Majesty. And its head rolls. <laughs> what? And he like looks up and says, "Who's talking?" Hi. Sorry to wake you up from your nap. Um. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. You're I have a, some fish for you. You're you a human. I am. You're talking to me. We can talk to animals sometimes. No. <laughs> Sam is like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a possibility that it entered his mind. Uh, well... Yeah, yes, we can, because there's magic. I'm talking to you right now. My name is Tam. What's your name? He, like, seems very confused, and finally he says, <laughs> uh, Cheddar. That's a great name for an orange cat. Okay. Would you like some fish, Cheddar? I would like some fish, Tam. <laughs> he gives he gives Cheddar a little bit of the fish. It's, it's crispy. I know it's not fresh. I'm sorry. This is the best I could do on short notice. Hmm. He kind of like a... nibbles at it. <laughs> is there a chance that you would be willing to go? back to where that card is and see if you can find a person for me and then I will give you more fish. Roll a persuasion check. 
I don't know why Tam thinks he can convince a cat of anything. I sure can't convince my cat of anything. <laughs> <laughs> but food is probably going to be the thing to do it. 25. Good, 25. Okay. <laughs> uh, Shatter just, like, laps up the, the piece of fish you've offered him, and he just looks up and he says, Okay. All right. Uh, Tam will make a minor, minor illusion of Kaiza. Okay. And say... Human. Can you, human. Can you tell me if you see this person? Yes. In there. Okay. I'll give you more fish. And Cheddar just looks at you. You want more fish? Okay. <laughs> 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 gives him a little more fish and says, okay, but after you come back, I will give you more fish. Okay. <laughs> he continues to sit on this half wall uh, looking at you. <laughs> Cheddar, ch Cheddar, can, can you go can you go see if you can find this person that I showed you, please? Oh, y yes. <laughs> he doesn't move. <laughs> Cheddar, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I notice. I notice that you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Cheddar like slowly stretches his legs. Okay. And he like stands up. <clears throat> and he just kind of like looks at you. Like the way a cat just looks at you for way too long. Sure. <laughs> now? Yes, please, now. And he just hops down and, like, begins to <laughs> plod off in that direction. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most accurate cat that's ever existed. Thank you, Echo, for this. <laughs> I'm literally crying. <laughs> So, you meanwhile, see... Meanwhile, Skullnut, Skullnut is like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> uh, you watch as this, as Cheddar the Orange Cat uh, walks out by that cart, um, and then you see him, like, take a right turn. Steps over, like... So the way the roads in Augur City are is they're mostly cobbled, and they have wagon ruts that run all the way down all of them. Uh, you watch as Cheddar sits down, like, right in between each of the wagon ruts. Just, like, looking in multiple... Like, just kind of looking around. Just in the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a long pause, and, like, you see, like, people are, like, walking in... There's, like, a wagon that's coming along, and you hear someone say, Hey! Move! Shoo! Hi! Ah! And just Cheddar, like, gets up and moves a little more off of the road. Um, horses nickering, they make their way. Um, and then the cat comes back in your direction. Eventually, Cheddar, like, hops back up on the half wall. It only took, like, five or six minutes. Cheddar, like, sits down and looks at you and says, Human. She's there. Yes. Inside check. Okay. <laughs> I no longer trust that this cat will tell me anything I don't want to hear. All right. Roll the inside check. <laughs> you are 17. confident with a 17. This cat thinks it saw a human. I, the human? The, the human that I wanted her in to find. <laughs> I, you can't tell that from an insight check, no. nor from the description the cat has given you. Okay, did you see this human, though? Yeah. The human that I have in this image. The, he just, like, starts licking his paw. It Cheddar, Cheddar, did you... Cheddar? <laughs> was, <laughs> was this human... 
was this human over there. Cheddar looks at the the illusion. Human right here. Me? me? No. You mean... This human was here. No. What do you mean? Like, the cat is, like, looking at the illusion and says, right here. Tam looks around. <laughs> you don't see Kaiza. <laughs> so this human is not over there. Could be. Did you see that human? Yes. And you saw you saw that human over there. Yes. And right here. You saw that human here? Yes. When? Right now. Th this human in the illusion. Yes, right now. What? Where? Right here. The cat's like looking square at the illusion. Oh my gosh. Do you... I don't know if you know if a cat understands what illusions are. Yeah. Yes. This is what's happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just playing who's on first with a cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, Cheddar. Thank you for this information. This was very, very helpful. More fish? <laughs> you will give him the rest of the fish. <laughs> just with no other words, Cheddar just starts <laughs> like biting yeah, into the ten, fish. Ten, mm, Tam is not going to try to pet him. That seems like a bad idea. Okay. Um, it, 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 <laughs> Tam is like rubbing his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Goes to Skullna and says, I think... She's over there, but I'm not sure because the cat wasn't sure, but I think she's over there. Skolna just nods slowly. Let's go look. Okay. Is there a way for us to kind of go around the other side so we don't disturb the same guard? Is that possible? I don't know. What it's quite is. a walk. Uh, you'd have to go all the way down to the ferry gate, which is... Okay. Like twenty minutes away, but you could. Can we? Can we sneak past? No. Okay. Not without like if if a wagon was coming through or a crowd of people, you could blend in with them. But otherwise, it's a gate. <laughs> and yeah. He's standing and, and inside the gate. Like there's and not. We're try... And we're basically trying to see through. You can just go through the gate. There's no. Like, okay, I, yeah, we will do that then. We'll go through the gate. Yeah, you just walk through the gatehouse. Like, the gate's open. Um, okay. People are allowed to go to the Fool's Porch. He was just asking you to stay away from the crime scene that was the cart. Fair. Okay. Okay, but we, as far as we know, theoretically, Kaiza, if he's in there, is not necessarily by the cart. Where Correct. We're not allowed to go. Okay, great. Uh, then we will go. Okay, you walk that way. You go through the gate. It Roll me an investigation check. Okay. Outside the gate, you notice there is a temple. Um, Roll me a religion check. Ooh. You probably know which one it is, but just in case. Just in case. Yeah. 16. You know it well. It's a temple of Tecrosius, the judge of the dead. Oh. One of the oldest gods, yeah? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you note is many of the clerics and paladins for Crocius wear clothes that are black and white uh, to represent good and evil, law and order, the opposites blending into one. Um, and there is a cleric, what looks like she's doing garden work outside of the temple of Crocius. Uh, she has black hair, and she's wearing a long black duster with a white undershirt and pants. 
Does she look like Kaizo? To a cat. Cool. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry that your options for animal talking. What a clever plan <laughs> that Sam has right. Sometimes <laughs> these things don't work. <laughs> yep. Sometimes they don't work. And it's great. The woman like notices you outside and she just like stands up and says, A pleasant day to you. Pleasant day to you too. Did, does Kroshis have like a, a thing that they're associated with, like a, a greeting or a salutation or anything that Tam might be familiar with? What's 16? With balance is with balance. a frequent, like a, it's like an, it's a well wishing basically. Like, Tam, Tam will say that. She smiles and bows her head and she says, with balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's gonna look around anyway to see if there's anything. Roll perception. Dude. Again, an eight. Wow, cool. Good. Good job, Tam. You find you've had a very hard time, like, seeing through the crowds of people. Uh, the, the headache from Chatter is maybe coming in a little hard. Yep. It's just, there's a lot of people and you're having a hard time focusing. Sure. Okay. Okay. You have plenty of time. The the crime scene we're we're going further away from the crime scene. Yeah. Now, right? So the crime scene is just inside the gate on the inner city side. Okay. You're now out. You're on the outer city. You're outside the walls. Um, the fool's porch is full of what look like markets and traders and both temporary and permanent buildings. So there's a lot of people here. They're coming in and out of the various buildings. They're going into what looks like a... It's almost like a a banner and canvas set up, quote-unquote, tavern. It's like a bar set up on the side of the road uh, that doesn't really have a roof. It has, like, a makeshift tent made up of draping silks that looks like it does a decent enough job keeping water from rainfall away. Um, nice. It's attractive. Um, you rec the name of it is uh, Viella's favorite shandy. Okay. Which you recognize Viella is the goddess of change and adventure. Okay. And this is a this is like a tavern sort of situation. Kinda. It's not really like it doesn't look like a tavern. There's like a bar that is a slice of a tree set up on top of uh, what looks like some old logs that were cut down. And there is a tender behind it and many people going in and out of it. Um, when the tender sees you looking in, uh, she's a half-orc. She kind of just waves and says, come in, got a drink. It's a warm day today. Is Skull anywhere? Can I see her at all? Roll an investigation. Oh God, okay. Why did I even ask? You can roll perception either. It's it's up to you. I mean, I I'm not. It's not like I'm really. Good. Watch me roll. Nope. Fifteen. Nope. You don't see Skolna. Okay. She's doing something, surely. I Skolna. I don't know where you. I'm gonna go in here for a minute. I'll be back. I'm here. Find me. He's looking around like at the air. Okay. <laughs> um. He will, yeah, he'll come inside. Welcome to the Shandy. What can I get you? Hi. Um, something refreshing and non-alcoholic. And maybe a conversation, if you have the time. You want a fizzy lemon? That would be great. Good, perfect. And the half work, like, it's like a blending of mix, and you see she, like, plops some ice into a cup, and then she hands it to you. It's pretty damn tall. Uh, it is basically a rudimentary version of a lemon soda that you are handed. 
fizzy lemon delicious. Uh, you wanted a chat? Is there any chance you know any of the Gold's Watch around here? Oh, sure. A lot of them stop by in the middle of their shift. We offer lots of things that aren't actually, you know, a spirit, so they don't have a problem. I can see it, and I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any chance you know one of them named Kaiser? Uh, <laughs> okay. You say that, and then from up the counter, you hear, "Who's asking?" Uh, who's who's talking? You look up the counter, and you see, seated at the bar, is Kaiza. <laughs> oh my god, oh my fucking god. <laughs> Leave it to Tam. For this to happen. Jesus Christ. Okay, um... Cool. Now what do I do? I don't know. <laughs> On Kaiza. <laughs> she like look is looking over at you. She's like leaning over. Uh it's like a, a tall drink that looks similar to yours, but pinkish. Um, and she has out on the counter uh what looks like a bunch of paper that she's like been scrawling on. And she's like looking over, like the drink looking over at you over her shoulder. Like, who the fuck is this <laughs> looking for me? Uh Wow, do you have like a pink? What is that? It's strawberry. Amazing. That's smart. Who the fuck are you? I'd recognize any ginger in this town. Not seen you before. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. Take your time. Hang on. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how the fuck... How the fuck does Tam want to play this? See, the thing is doesn't have proficiency in deception, and he doesn't like to lie. Well? So... Jesus Christ, Tam, you're an idiot. Tam looks at her. I mean, is he he's next to her now? No, like, she's at the far end of the bar on the corner, where she has, like, the whole corner to herself. Uh, okay. Tam will put Tam will put some coppers on the counter for the drink. A couple couple copper coppers probably. Yeah, it's or two. Like she would look up and be like two copper. Yeah, she'll he'll give her four. Um, All right, and... another coming. No, 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 no. You you take it. You take it. Um. It, he will slide down the bar to be next to her. Say, okay. So you know all the gingers in this town? Yeah, there's like two. Huh. Okay. One of them's a fire genasi. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Red hair. It's just a rare color. So, who are you? Oh. Um, and why do you know who I am? Because you're not one of my friends. <laughs> I could, I could be. If this is a way of coming on to someone, it's a real weak start. I know. Here's here's the thing. Tam drops his disguise self. You? Yeah. Okay. You like she, it's clear she's tensed up and she's like leaned away from the bar. Hey, don't please don't run away from me. Okay. I'm not running anywhere. Hey, you're you're too capable for that. I understand. I was wondering if you would be open to a trade in information. What kind of information are you looking for? I'm wondering what it was, why it was that you were chatting up Inigo last night. In why? 
And how do you know? He was our assignment. Hmm. Okay. Why is that important to you? I can't tell you that. You're going to have to tell me something. Uh, I could tell you... you on, you're on the that case of that murder that happened yesterday? Yeah, that's not a surprise. Every guard is. Uh-huh. Found the murder weapon yet? No. Do you want to know where that is? Because my rogue on my team, real smart, she found it. Okay. That's... That's... She, like, pinches the bridge of her nose, looks down at her papers, and she, like, closes uh, the ledger that she was looking at. And she turns and she looks at you and she says, I can't understand. Well, a couple things. You're with the Marigar, and Enigo was your assignment. Yep. So why'd you follow me? And why'd you tell me that I was your assignment? Or contract, whatever you said. Because I didn't know if you were supposed to be part of our assignment or not. And I didn't want to, and I didn't want you to know that Annika was our assignment. But now, I am trying to cover my ass. Mm. Boss is not happy with me. Okay. Yeah. Look, I just only got contracted. I'm not very good at this. I mean, I'm pretty good at some things. But I don't know if I can cut it overall. And I don't want to get sent back to Therum. I don't want to get sent back to my family. My family's not going to know what to do with me. I'm a bard now and not a cleric. You don't need to know all this. Why is this my problem? Good question. It's really my problem. And I'm asking you to be gentle with me. I really can give you that information. Look, kid, I understand you're new on the job. I get mm -hmm. it. But I have a job, too. And Anna goes in with some interesting people. And if he was your contract, I need to know who that was. Who's looking into him? You tell me that, I'll tell you what I know. I can't tell you that. Then we're stuck here, kid. How old are you? You look like 18? 19. Okay. Yeah, you are fresh on the job. It's all right. Look, I saw the crew you had with you, right? Mm -hmm. I know you're Merrick Hart. They generally handle contracts that are not so picky as to who they work for. And these are dark times around here, though it might not look it. No, I know. She I'm, insights I'm check Kayan. you. I'm Kayan. I know. Be careful. You see why it's important that I keep my job? Mm-hmm. She is inside checking you. Mm hmm What did she get with a 25? Uh, Tam legitimately looks upset. 
Um, he he's fidgety. He's nervous. Um, he, he doesn't look like he wants to be. He he doesn't he doesn't he he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. Okay. Uh, Kaiza looks at you, and he she kind of just <sighs> man. Okay. Well, I might not be able to tell you much, since you can't tell me much. I can say this. City ain't happy. It's dangerous around here. There's two sides and nobody's sure who's on what. So whoever you're working for, make sure they're not sending you anywhere that you can't handle. Otherwise, I just have more blood on the street I have to clean up. You don't want there to be more blood on the street? No. It's my job to keep so that from happening. Well, you would prefer then that all the tension dissipates? What effect does this war have on the city, actually? It can't be good. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the city's problems. Like, yeah, the war is a draw, but it also... People build shit here. The factories are making money. People have jobs again. That's not my problem. My problem is the shit going on in the dark alleys in the background. People dying because of what their jobs are. Someone getting killed within the gates and right in front of a guard. Just because of what their job is somewhere else. So you don't care about the war? It's not my problem. I gotta look for the people here. Like, it sucks we're at war. Yeah. I'm not happy about that. But I got bigger fish to fry. You wouldn't choose a side. My side's... here. So... Not Kayan, I guess. You get a tough break here, kid. Yeah. Agra City's a big one, and it doesn't give a shit about the little guys. Yeah, honestly, uh... There are parts of Proto City that they don't care. Never been. It's different than here. It's older. Yeah, same with everywhere on Alps. <laughs> There's more elves. That I'm sure. <laughs> I would like to go back there someday. Well, might be a minute. Yeah, I haven't been able to get anything through to my family in a long time. No, border's closed. Okay. I will say, if that murder weapon was tampered with in any way, I know who I'm no. coming to. Not tampered with. Promise. You don't want to do a, you don't want to do an old salt a favor and just tell me where it is. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm afraid if now, if I do that, you're going to think that our crew had something to do with it, and truly, we didn't. We were just looking for stuff. You have an alibi. You weren't there. Okay. Yeah, that's true. They know that. How about this? Hmm. I might be stuck here for a little bit. I could use some friends. I could use some allies. Have a drink with me later tonight. 
she like looks at her strawberry beverage and then at your lemon beverage and she's like you mean another yeah where you're off duty uh i'm never yeah. really off duty but there are times when it's softer that's fair did skullna give me the name of the place uh roll history you've been here before she was talking about like a boarding house sort of situation so boarding houses are not taverns at all. Yeah, that's uh, fair. There are various other taverns. Um, if, just roll me a d3. Okay. Is there something? Is there something that like we could get like a room upstairs, something like this? I'm still trying to think of the angle of like getting her by herself. No. How do I do d3? Slash r space d3. Slash R, there we go. I did the slashes in the wrong place. Slash R, I can do technology, I promise. Two. Uh, one comes to mind that's fairly close by. It's in the chapels. Is called the Green Maid. Green Maid? When? When are you off? Well, you said you were never really off shift. Huh. Six, seven, around there. Seven. Okay. Roll of persuasion. Come on, Tim. Come on, baby. Well, good for me right now. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right, if it gets you out of my hair right now, yeah, it's fine. I'll be there on seven. Okay. Don't expect anything different, though. Just, I'm not. No. I'm not changing. I, I... <laughs> no, of course not. Thank you. Do me a favor. Yeah. Just look like you. I will. I promise. I just, the guards, know what they look like and would have been. You know, I was trying to look for you, and I didn't want to get pushed away, so. It's whatever. Okay. Thanks. She just goes, mm, and like is looking back down at her papers. Um, the drinks, the rest of his fizzy lemon. What is, can I get a sense of what's on this paper? Uh, what language do you speak? Uh, not very much. Do I have my language? Where are my languages on this thing? <laughs> Elvish and Celestial. I think that's Elvis Celestial. Oh, and uh, Primordial. And Infernal. And Infernal. Because you're yes. a tiefling. You Infernal. cannot read it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> it is not uh, in a language so, you understand. It is not in a language I understand. It is likely that is on cool. purpose. <laughs> cool and fine. <laughs> okay. Cool and fine. I shall take my leave. I shall drink my fizzy lemon and take my leave. Okay. As you and make your way out... Try to find Skull. <laughs> she's walking next to you as soon as you leave the building. Oh, my fucking ghost. <laughs> she just, like, what? next to you and you hear she says, Seven o'clock. You are just a treasure. I... You're, I don't know how you... I don't know how you do it. Yes. Yes. Green meat, seven o'clock. She nods. So what kind of preparations do we have to make? Were you listening to the whole conversation? She nods. And then she says, we need to scope the place. See what sort of rooms they have. Pick one that's not got a window. Or if it has a window, it's on alley side. feel bad, Skolna. She's not a bad person. And don't kill her. How are we going to trust a person that only cares about the city and doesn't care about the war? Convince her that our side's the right side. Convince her Demerick's bad for the city. We 
we've got work to do. Yep. As you make your way towards the Green Mead, you found Kaiza. You have a plan. That is where we will stop tonight's session. I talked to a cat. You did. <laughs> Good old cheddar. It was a wild goose chase. <laughs> it was quite amusing. <laughs> I hope you had a good time playing with me tonight. And for those of you who are watching or listening, whether you be at home or at work, we love you. Hi, Penn. Hi, Emily. Hi, class. Hi, everybody else. And I will see you all next time. Good night. Good night.